Before we explain automated scoring, it helps to take a look at what Metacog does. Let's start with the goal of Metacog, to improve the learning outcomes of students using data analysis. Metacog is an internet scale data platform, which essentially means it will work even if thousands of schools are using it all over the world. There are two phases of Metacog, data capture and data analysis. Of course, data are already being collected from digital learning objects, but usually from outside of the interactives. But Metacog captures data from within the digital interactives, so instead of just getting overall time on task and the final result, you can see how much time students spent on different tasks and, more importantly, the sequence of what they did. It's easy to retrofit existing digital learning objects, and of course it could be done as part of new development as well. You might wonder how this would affect the performance, and the answer is that it doesn't. Data are collected without affecting the responsiveness of the digital learning objects. At this point, there are three APIs in the Metacog suite, and a few more are on the way. The first thing you need to be able to do is retrieve your data. Data are collected anonymously, so no personally identifiable information is stored in the cloud. Then, the Visualization API lets you visualize the data, for example, to compare an individual student score to a class or school district, or to measure the progress of one student over time. So, how are those scores produced? How can you measure the performance of a student using an interactive learning object? Basically, we use machine learning techniques to teach the machine to score. There are two phases for this. One is the training phase, and then there's an auto-scoring phase. In the training phase, a content expert uses a session recorder to record different kinds of responses. The expert also writes a rubric to score each user session. Together, each user session with its score is called a training session. The content expert creates a training session for each cell in the rubric. In this way, the software will be able to generate a score for every type of expected response. In Phase 2, the machine learning algorithm is fed the training sessions. It uses this knowledge to score additional sessions. The scores are spot-checked by a content expert, and after validation, machine scoring can be relied upon. It's important to note that this process is really not much different from the workflow publishers already use to produce interactive performance tasks. The same content experts that develop the performance tasks are ideal for generating the rubric and generating sample user sessions. Answer keys are always double and triple checked, often by a dedicated QC department, who could of course check the results of the machine scoring. If there is field testing, that is the perfect time to test and adjust the rubric, to take into account any unexpected answers. The power of machine scoring is that it removes a significant barrier for the end user. Once teachers know they can rely on machine scoring for open-ended activities, they will use them more often. Machine scoring also will free up their time so they can focus on what they do best, using the scoring results to teach better and to customize teaching.